is the only thing that happens after this. And we're going to switch over to Ultima 4. Save states are off. We're going to play J version to save uh, six or seven minutes. If I play, U I, I thought about playing US version, but um, I, I mashed through everything so fast anyways that I don't think anybody can read read the text in either version, so <laughs> uh, given that, I decided to just play the J version as as Masa Blade has, uh, once he finished his run, then we all started kind of kind of migrating over and playing this version instead, because it, it is way faster on the text. Uh, even on the, my very first split in this game, which is only about a minute, a minute long split, I, I saved like 10 seconds playing J version, so. But that's the diff it's only for the text speed basically so here we go I'm gonna set up the character here which is a lot easier than Ultima 3 speed to 9 we'll call the character yo an exclamation mark and time is gonna start when I hit a here here we go in five four three two one go now here's a uh, single elimination tournament here. This is, they're asking, it's a personality quiz. It says stuff like, you find a bag of gold on the ground, you try to find its rightful owner or keep it for yourself. Stuff like that. And uh, there's seven questions. I'm gonna ask, say, no, say the second option to the last two and that's gonna give us the paladin as a class. So we're now a paladin. Depending on your answers, you will be one of the eight classes. We pick paladin because he starts with a thousand gold worth of gear. He starts in the town of Trinzik, which is here, and there's a lot of good things going on about Trinzik. We've got a, sh a weapon shop that sells a bow, and ranged attacks are very fast. Walking up to an enemy and meleeing them is very slow. We're going to start by selling uh, the chain armor that I start the game with. 600 gold, so already we've got 1,000 gold. I'm going to buy the bow for 680, and we're going to equip it immediately. So already the start is super strong compared to the other classes because we've got the bow already. And we're going to go search this field for a rune. That was the rune of honor. Uh, the runes allow you to enter the shrines. And the shrines is where you meditate to get your virtues up to 100. We'll talk about that a little bit later. But in this game, the goal is to become a good person. There's these eight stats called virtues. Like compassion, sacrifice, honesty, valor, honor. And there's a really good fight. But uh, you've got to get all these stats to 100, basically. And a, a junk amount of gold. We start the run with 9 gold. That's pretty bad. I made a manipulation for this game that saves 3 minutes and 30 seconds over the first 15 minutes of the game. So I'm not going to do that here, but um, I do fully manipulate the first 12 minutes of the game nowadays. And we're going to pick up... Oh, there's a good one to make up for that other one. The gold is random from 1 to 99, it averages about 40 golds per chest, and we need a bunch of gold before we hit Minok. Now I'm uh, using the bow on most, I'm going to just whack that guy with my sword. The first command of the list there is auto, so there's this auto command that can auto fight for you, and it does various actions depending on what's happening. But there's 31 golds, we're keeping track of the gold. I need to go. Get these, please, please. Thank you. I waited really long there. I could have missed that cycle there. But now we, we took the moon uh, gates to moon glow. In this game, uh, we don't have we can't hit mash B to change the moons. We just have to wait here. And even on the uh, the terrain that I'm on, I'm standing on the swamp tile because uh, the the battle rate is much higher here on swamp tile than. And grass and I need a lot of fights to, to become the avatar. I need 49 random battles before the end of the game and the reason why this run is an hour and a half and the others are half an hour is because there's a lot of requirements to enter the final dungeon like a, a, a truck ton of requirements. You have to become the avatar, you have to get the three keys, the eight stones, the eight runes, uh, the bell book and the candle. It's just like this whole whole list of stuff you gotta do before you can uh, enter the final dungeon go on to the ending sequence. Okay, we're gonna go here and search there for the black stone. There was one of the eight stones right there. It only appears when the, the moons are new moon, new moon. And we're gonna miss the, the cycle out of moon glow, but that's fine. We need a bunch of battles anyways. There's 
He's a, uh, I guess that's like a goblin captain. He takes two bow hits. Sometimes you do miss. You miss once about every uh, eight shots or so. 72 gold. The gold is coming in pretty nicely. We're just going to wait here and farm at Moonglow. Trying to reach 581 gold before we hit Minok, which is another town that we're about to uh, warp to in a little bit. We auto that guy with the sword. Yeah, nice gold, nice gold. The the manipulation I made, it makes it so that you get like 90 plus gold on every chest, and using that I don't have to recruit anybody. Uh, we're about to go to Jalom after this. After we're done here in Moonglow, we're going to go to the town of Jalom and pick up our first companion, which I don't do in the manipulation anymore, but um, for this run we will. We need the moons to hit... Uh, Double new moon. And the window is coming up here pretty soon. I feel like my gold is so high that I've stayed here too long, but um, I think this is fine. I mean, it just cycles around and you can go the next time. Yeah, we're about to go to Jalom. There we go. Three. We're almost good on gold. Huh. Alright, here comes our portal. Take it easy on the battles here. Because with that amount of gold, we have hit our gold amount. And we're just going to head to Jalom here. Go pick up Joffrey. Oh, blocks, yeah. Here's the town of Jalom. The only thing we can do here is pick up our good buddy. Joffrey, or if you want to call him Jeff. He is a fighter. Jalom is the town of the fighters. And Valor is the corresponding virtue to this town. There's a rune of Valor here, but I can't get it yet. And his first job of the team is uh, we're going to tell him to take off his clothes. And he's got a nice, valuable looking leather armor. And I'm going to sell it. Hey, I just joined the party. How can I help? Take off your clothes. We're going to the pawn shop. <laughs> okay. We are going to leave here ASAP. We got 200 gold out of that leather armor. And it's gonna take him. It's gonna take Jeffrey too uh, too long to walk up there. I'm just gonna bow. Use the bow on everything there. And we're heading off to Scarabray for some similar uh, recruitment. We're gonna pick up Shamino the Ranger. Then. Uh, after this, we're going to go outside and just wait on the town, because we, we've got enough battles and we've got enough gold. We're just waiting. Uh, running it in Japanese is uh, not too hard, as I have run it in the US version uh, a lot. And so a lot of times it's just remembering like how many how many times to move the cursor? Alright, there we go. We use the portal and we're headed to Minok. We've got the gold we need, so. Ew, this is a. Uh, this is quite the battle. Yikes! This is a gross battle. This is, a, this is one of those battles where if you're just doing attempts, you're just like, nope! And you hit that reset button. So. The thing about this game is random battles have are harder and have more enemies if you have more party members. So it's not actually 
beneficial uh, to have extra party members. I'm gonna switch to this guy. Let Joffrey take the left one. Oh yeah, this is why... we're only recruiting them for their gear, basically. Because we need a lot of gold in the early game here. And we don't really want to farm at all. We need a good, like, 3,500 golds. But uh, we're going to get most of that elsewhere. Either by collecting party members and taking their gear, or... Um, yeah, just selling it at double cost. So let's go here and sell... Uh, we're going to sell, I said sell uh, Shamino's gear. Shamino's sword for 400. And then we're gonna buy 1500 gold plus two sword. Make sure our gold is uh, nice and low there. Alright, so what we did there was uh, we sold some of Shamino's gear because we're about to get rid of Shamino. And we're hiding the rest of our money in that 1500 gold sword. We're gonna pick up Julius here. He's the tinker of the town of Minoc, uh, which is the town of Sacrifice. And we're going to donate the rest of our golds to this beggar. We should have 22, yep. Yeah. And what that does, is it gives us uh, plus 5 to c Compassion and Sacrifice. Two, two of the virtues, we get plus 5. We have to do that a total of 10 beggars. Now that we're uh, at the end here, we're to the Minoc Furnace. There's a Rune of Sacrifice on the floor in the Furnace. Everybody's gonna follow me in and we're gonna get a little roasty inside. A little, little roasty, little toasty. Hanging out in the Furnace and we got the Rune and we're gonna Death Warp to the King. Hit level 4. I can't believe they all followed me in there. I'm such a good leader. <laughs> My, my followers will, will follow me anywhere. Alright, we'll get the Tremor spell here. Well, we'll get knowledge of it, we don't actually have it yet. So we talk to this mage and we get knowledge of the Tremor spell. Then we're gonna head into this hidden room, try to find 28 golds. We only got 28, so let's do another one. 99! Look at that! That was, that was completely not manipulated, it was just lucky. Alright, we got loads of golds. We're here in uh, Castle Britain, by the way, which was uh, a town that I haven't really been to yet, but that's where you go when you die. Let's talk to the king, he heals you up. Now we're gonna do some uh, terrible menuing and try to uh, get everybody's gear to the paladin. I got it all to the Paladin. Now we're gonna go to the hostel here and get rid of everybody. You guys have done enough. I've got your gear now. So take it easy. I'll take care of the rest. And we we, we ditch everybody. Because remember, the random battles are terrible if you have more than uh, one person. If you have like three or four party members, they're really bad. Now we head outside and look for a ship. No ship there. I manipulate this in the new... There's a new manip that I made that manipulates the first 12 minutes of the game. And I get a free ship here, but randomly sometimes you have to look for it. There it is. Nope, it's stuck. <laughs> it's stuck on, the, stuck on the white tiles there. There it is. Uh, but I might get a battle before then. Come on, make it. Thank you. Okay, so we get our pirate ship. Unlike Ultima 3, there's always 8 pirates here, and 2 are always big pirates. So I hit level 4 there at the king, and now my mana is 23. So we can cast the energy spell for 22. And the good thing about the energy spell is it creates that 3x3 three three lava field on the ground. And if an enemy walks through that and dies, there's zero text. So it's just super fast. Watch this. I'm gonna, that guy's gonna die, and then that guy's gonna maybe die. There you go. Nope, he didn't. Wow, that, guy, that was a very resilient pirate there. I'm gonna wait for the battle. I'll take a land battle here. Yep, this one has uh, like a million fake walls. Here we go, nice. 
We're gonna leave that chest there. And head south. We gotta go to Buccaneer's Den. To buy some things. And I think I can land... Land there. There it is. I'll take a land battle here. Uh, usually the land battles are better than the sea battles at this point because I don't have the crossbow yet. But uh, this one was pretty bad too, so unlucky. You still lose stance if you don't let enemies flee. Uh, yeah, for sure. It's it's more to do with uh, like neutral enemies, not these uh, hostile enemies. But also, if if I run away from a battle, I lose one valor. Get off me, pirate ship. Unlike Ultimate 3, there's there's many more than uh, one pirate ship in the world, so these guys just appear at random, and we'll take battle here, but we'll leave the chest outside, I think. But yeah, a lot of things you can do in this game can hurt your virtues. They All the virtues, all eight virtues start at 50, um, and you need to do things like donate to beggars, uh, get in 49 random battles, and talk to a tree and talk to some fire. We'll, we'll go over those later. I'll mention when my virtues cap out. Uh, sell. We need to sell all the weapons that we took from those party members. Sell the bow for 680. I'm even losing virtues here by selling them for double of what they're, the shopkeeper is asking for. But we get the 1500 back for our sword. And we're gonna buy a crossbow. And we're gonna go sell those two leather armors as well. For 200 each. See, he offered 100, but I say no, 200. And for, for that, I'm gonna lose virtue, but we gain a lot of gold in the process. So we're gonna equip our axe, Joffrey's axe, and the crossbow that I just bought. Now we need to buy a key. Key costs 2,000. It's like the magic key in Zelda. Um, Check my gold here. Okay, we're good on gold. We spent the 2,000 and I got the key. It's like the magic key until they can open up any number of doors. I am a paladin, by the way. Paladin starts with the most money. And we're, this is the blind herb vendor. We're gonna rip her off. We're gonna ask for stacks of 90 herbs. We're only gonna give her actually one gold per stack, even though she's asking for a lot more. And we're gonna do that seven times, so we're just robbing the crap out of this uh, blind, <laughs> blind lady. Uh, this is what we have to do to become a good person and lead the lead the people um, to, through an age of peace. Is just completely rob this poor lady. We are just robbing her to death. She's gonna be broke after this. And a select button. Uh, Opens up a hidden man root window, and we pick up the man root, and we've got like a 90 stack of each herb. And the herbs are for spell casting. We're gonna end up Buccaneer Den trip by talking to this beggar and giving all the money, all the money we got, which is 150. That beggar is now rich, although they will still be begging if you come back. And we gotta loot this for next town. Yeah, so now we talked about the eight virtues, honesty, compassion, sacrifice, justice. Uh, my virtues are now very low <laughs> after all of that stealing we just did, so we need to fix that later. Please leave a slice of bread. All right, we donate more, so now we're, we're getting more virtuous here. That gives us another five compassion and sacrifice. And we use our key that we just bought to get into the horse stables, and in the back of the horse stables is a rune, the rune of humility. We pick that up. The rune of humility, again, is to enter the shrine of humility. And you need 99, you need your virtue of humility to be 99, which we'll work on later. And once it's 99, you go into the uh, shrine of humility and meditate, and it'll bump it up to 100. And to become the avatar, we need 100 on every virtue. And I'll, I'll point out when, when the certain virtues are capping out at 99. So far, none of them. So far, right now, our virtues are very low. I think our honesty is down to like 25. 
And let's get that for the Britain dagger. The herbs are to cast spells, yes. Uh, like any spell, they all use different combinations of herbs. We're just gonna head straight in here. Bard is gonna block me. Thanks, Bard. And we're gonna go talk to this beggar. Donate our 22 gold. All of it. Donating all your money gives you compassion and sacrifice. If you donate a little bit of money, you only get compassion. And if you say zero, then you lose compassion. <laughs> and just, you lose some compassion. We picked up a uh, rune by the stairs there. Pretty much every town, all the eight main towns in the world have runes. Uh, and we're gonna go out here. Go back into the Britain Castle, which is where we were when we death warped. And here's where we start really farming the virtues. Because you, you might say, what what are we gonna have to do to atone for robbing that lady? Um, and the answer is, we're gonna go up to this hidden door in a jail cell and talk to a tree. And we're gonna talk to him a lot. Like 15 times. <laughs> this, this is making us very virtuous. Uh, our virtues are just... We get plus 5 to 4 virtues every time. So there's like 6. Like 7. I'll, I'll tell you what he says in a second. 8. 9. 10. 11. 12. Rumors say that the J version saves like... 30 minutes of text right here. 15. 15. Well, we'll do one more because I'm very un not confident on that count. So, so right now, four of that maxed four of our virtues to 99. Uh, it has no cooldown. You can just talk to him as much as you want, and it, it raises everything except compassion, sacrifice, valor, and honesty. All the other four, other than the ones I just mentioned. Um, and what he says is like, uh, murdering everybody w with the skull of Mondain will feel good. Do you too wish to do this? And you say no, and then he says, thou art a wimp. So we're gonna go into this uh, Hithloth dungeon, and as exit, exit spell out of there so to get to the balloon. We got a little balloon ride ahead of us. This is a very conveniently placed battle. We get a chest right here for 90 gold, which is a nice amount of gold, and we're gonna go... East, that was? No, that was not East. It's here. <laughs> Japanese, please. Okay. It's uh, West, East, North, South. And sometimes the wind randomly changes, so I have to watch the balloon. Right here in this triple volcano section, if you dive in the middle there with the pirate ship, you can um, find the Skull of Mundane, and you can actually use it in the game. Bring it to a town, use it. It'll kill everybody in the town, and surprisingly your virtues don't get uh, damaged too much. You lose like two to each virtue or something really, really small. It's like, you just murdered everybody and you just lost like almost no virtues. Alright, there was the first uh, beggar of this beggar grind. We gotta get our compassion and sacrifice up. So we need to farm this beggar um, four more times. And that'll take our compassion and sacrifice up to 99. Remember, we already have four virtues at 99. Now we're working on the next two. And this will be the second donation for 76. There's two. And also there's a hidden step counter. Before you can donate to a beggar again, you have to take like 16 steps on the overworld. And I'm standing on the bridge again because of the, the terrain. Uh, the terrain on the bridge is much higher combat rate than on the bushes around here. There's a terrible amount of gold for menuing purposes. 56 is one of the worst. Okay, there's three. Arming this beggar here for compassion and sacrifice. Uh, notice it's it's right by the entrance. That's why we're here. It's because it's a very small walk to get to that beggar. Any other town, there would be quite the walk. Okay, there was four. 
Somebody... I miscounted. <laughs> Somebody please let me know what I think this is right. This should be five. Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll be confident here and not do another one. Uh, north. And on the wind. That will make the wind come from the north. And blow us south. We're done, and the wind is going to be a jerk and blow me back north. So I'm going to again cast wind. When I first played this game, I did not actually know that you had control of the wind. And... It just kind of randomly... Uh, took me around the world. Wow, man, this wind is not letting me go south. It just keeps randomly changing in almost no time at all. This is fine, though. We can just lose some... Uh, we're losing herbs for all these wind casts, but I think it doesn't use the important herb that I'm uh, trying to save. Uh, this is gonna be here, then. Looks a little different, because I'm so far east. And we reach the town of Cove. In the town of Cove, it's it's easier to reach this town by balloon, but you can reach there by a pirate ship from that lake. But we talked to Mentalia on there, and he gives us knowledge of the gate spell. Remember, we also talked to that mage earlier and got knowledge of the tremor spell. So it doesn't give us the spells; it just gives us the knowledge. We have to go get the spells later. But we also pick up uh, one of the three items needed to enter the final dungeon, which is the candle in that chest there. And we're headed over through some an obscene amount of hidden doors back to our balloon. The, the wind should be blowing this way still. And now we're headed to the last of the balloon. Say goodbye to the balloon music. If you enjoyed the balloon music, it will soon be over. As we are about to reach the white stone in this balloon-only cave. So this is, uh, only balloon can get into this cave. Hey, thanks, Jair. the raids guys hope everybody's join enjoying the marathon here and we picked up the white stone in that chest so as far as stones go we have the white stone and the black stone as far as virtues go we've got six of them at 99 the the ones we don't have 99 are honesty and valor honesty was from stealing all of those herbs from that poor lady about to go fix that right now. And the Valor, it means that I need to do 49 random battles. Uh, we don't have any money, so we need to wait. That was it for the balloon. We ditched it. It is no more. We did all the balloon stuff in the world. Maybe a couple of uh, ogres. It's all ogre for them. <laughs> all right. Uh, that was a 15 gold loot there, and now we have to go fix our honesty by talking to some fire. So, you know, you kind of just like stare into the fire and consider your past choices, and uh, all of a sudden you become a more honest person. Got four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine, ten, eleven. Rumor has it J version saves an hour on this conversation. Twelve, thirteen. I'm gonna take one more. Might as well just take one more, just in case. Okay, now our honesty is definitely ninety-nine. So we have seven virtues at ninety-nine. Uh, our valor. We still need forty-nine random battles, which will just come when it comes. And other than that, there's Blockade Guard. He only appears in J-Version. He blocks the, the the easy path there. We're going to use our key on this jail cell. Go search here for a Rune of Justice. That allows us to enter the Shrine of Justice. Now that our Justice is 99, we could go do that and bop our Justice up to 100. And once every Virtue is 100, you become the Avatar, which has some... Uh, Benefits. There's our last beggar. This should be the tenth beggar, and now our sacrifice and compassion are also 99. There's Minnesota Mary. He gives you the squish bell, don't you know? 
uh, which is something that she says in the English version. And now that we're out of there, ooh, we, we're good moons to go to the moon gate over here. Usually in the past I have gone uh, northeast to the Shrine of Justice, but nowadays I'm just headed to this moon gate right away. So there's a, there's, it's pretty open-ended of what you can do right now. I will be taking the moon gate. Okay, I can have a deflect spell for deflect, deflecting bow shots, but uh, seems like he didn't cast that. That's one thing I struggle with in the J version is knowing when they cast deflect is important because you don't want to use a bow attack if they have that up. That's a buff they have that uh, uh, deflects all of your... I'm going to attack this guy actually for more damage. Kind of good. This is kind of a bad fight. Good energy. Let's just enter. No, let's, let's save the energy. I'm, I'm worried about my uh, herbs to last me for the rest of the run. Alright, we're just gonna hang out here at the moon gate and take that when it comes up, which is now. And remember, we left our ship here by this moon gate. We're gonna. Hop back in our ship. Now I'm going to use the ice spell on uh, this squid right here. The ice spell will one-shot it. Uh, I can only I only have the mana to do it once, so we have to crossbow the rest. But uh, the ice spell is nice. It's a nice bread and butter spell. Like It doesn't use uh, too many herbs that other spells use, and all of the spells share the er your whichever herbs you have. We have to get whatever herbs we have right now last us the entire run. So I don't want to use a lot of the things that is shared by the, the popular spells I'm going to use later, like heal, like energy, like squish, like all of those things. Here we are at the uh, Shrine of Compassion, and we meditate there. Since our compassion is should be at around 99, um, yeah, we got our, uh, our beggars done correctly. So, since our compassion was 99, we meditated at that Shrine of Compassion, and now our compassion is 100. And we could only enter the Shrine in the first place because we had the Rune of Compassion, which we found in the town of Britain by the stairs in the inn. Like, there's a key. The Rune is the key to enter each Shrine, and you have to have each individual key to enter each individual Shrine. I know it all sounds complicated, but... After you play this game for a while, you just kind of follow follow the route and go on autopilot. And there's a couple places where I could make a choice and go one place or the other, and it doesn't really matter. Uh, oftentimes, the run will diverge, and I'll go a different way one one run and a different way the other run. And, but we'll, we're doing all the same stuff, but the order of it is sometimes different. Right there on that island, we... Uh, picked up the horn. I searched the, the tile there and picked up a horn. That's to get into the Shrine of Humility. The, the Shrine of Humility has two keys. You gotta have the Rune of Humility to get in, but before that, to even get inside in the first place, you need the horn to get past a never-ending battle. If you don't have the horn and you, you encounter that battle, then they just knock you back and the battle is still there. So there we go. Uh, let me try to despawn that pirate ship so I don't have to deal with him. Uh, you saw me blink out of that one pirate fight there. I don't want to take any pirate fights because they're too long. And I have a spell called Blink that lets me freely escape from battle. I'm going to search here for the Rune of Honesty. And we'll, we'll pick up Mariah. Mariah will carry our party with her mana pool. Okay, now we go to the spell shop. Uh, we're gonna talk to this person, and hopefully we got three spells queued up. And we get the squish spell, we get the tremor spell, and the gate the gate spell. I think I went out of order, but we got those three spells. All right, squish attacks everything, all monsters, and it does percent damage. It does a lot of percent damage. It's guaranteed to hit everything. The Tremor spell does a butt-ton of damage, but it's 50-50 on each mob, so it's kind of a gamble to use it 
most of the time, so I'm not going to use it much, but there is a couple fights that are so dangerous that I'll gamble on them at the end of the run, because if you don't, it, there is no safer alternative, really. <laughs> hey, somebody, somebody got that, uh... I, I was afraid that there was going to be a tumbleweed going across the chat on that joke. I, I tried really hard on that joke. But yeah, Mariah... Mariah here is here to carry the party uh, with her mana of 50. She starts with 50 mana. Right now the Paladin only has uh, 23, level 4. We need to go get a mana upgrade for him. We'll do once. We're here in the Lyceum to get this book. It's one of the three items needed to enter the final dungeon. The Bell Book and the Candle. We've already got the uh, Candle out of the town of Cove, and now we get the book here. The Bell is in the ocean. Gotta go dive for it. But that's just another one of the requirements. One of the many, many, many requirements to enter the final dungeon. Gotta be the avatar, get the bell book and candle. Gotta have eight stones. Gotta have uh, eight runes to become the avatar in the first place. Gotta have all your virtues to 100. Gotta have the three keys. It's, it's this massive uh, shopping list of things you need to enter the abyss. All right, now that Mariah's here, we can uh, have her use the ice spell a little bit. And that really speeds up these uh, four-pack battles because she can carry carry herself as well as me. Uh, so here we've got our first dungeon, 3D dungeon, and we're gonna use the light spell and enter. Nope, oh, this I'm thinking of somewhere else, but go down the ladder here. These dungeons are always the same. Also, there's a front entrance and a back entrance. We're here to get the stone. Every we we gotta go through six dungeons to get six stones. We've already got the white stone and the black stone in our uh, inventory already. It's my favorite fight in the game. Use double energy. And remember that um, anything that dies to this 3x3 lava energy field, there's no text, so it's a time save. Every time something dies, you save like a second. And it looks like a lot of them died right there. Now we have to get our paladin to 22 mana. Maybe a little heal would be in order, so we'll heal the Paladin up there and get him to 22 mana for the next room. Uh, he doesn't have enough for a uh, Squish at the moment, but Mariah can use Squish and we'll just energy with the Paladin and Squish with Mariah and look it does uh, guaranteed like, percent damage to everything and all of those just follow up by walking into the energy field there. And the Paladin can just pick off any survivors with his crossbow. Alright, no uh, mana farm here. Get a, your, mana manage, your mana management is uh, pretty important. You gotta not walk into fights without enough mana. We're gonna go heal with Mariah again. We need to heal a couple times here because the Paladin's about to take a, a fixed 200 damage. Alright, that should be good. We'll have 135 after that. And we'll get into another fight here. Paladin energy, again Mariah squish. We're gonna use a lot of uh, squish and energy in these. Uh... Yo, uh, Mariah didn't have enough for squish there, so we're gonna have to hold off on that for a couple turns. Uh, well, this is fine though. I can just use it next turn. I'll just use it here. That's fine. Like I said, like you don't want to enter the fight with less than uh, 28 mana like I did here, but uh, we can just take some extra steps after the battle to get that mana back up. And there's some... I don't know why this room exists, but it's here, so we have to cross that bridge. And here there's an orb. We're gonna touch the orb, the paladin takes 200 damage, and we gained 5 maximum dex, uh, which gives us 5 maximum mana. Uh, don't ask me, like, why, but that's how it works. <laughs> you get five, 5 more dex to the paladin, and he gets 5 more max mana. Now his max mana is 28, so he does now have uh, enough to cast Squish as well. That's the only one we're gonna touch. You can, you can farm those and get his max mana way up, but uh, we decided not to.
But yeah, don't. Also, Int gives you ranged accuracy. Uh, I guess they just mixed, messed up the programming and uh, swapped those two stats or something. But yeah, all the stats in this game are messed up. X gives you mana, Int gives you ranged accuracy. I have no idea what Strength gives you, uh, as I do not melee in this run. Or I do, but uh, not very often. More yoga! <laughs> I am more dexterous, so... More dex stat equals more dexter. Nice little seahorse battle here. Remember that's another uh, plus one to the valor every time we get into a random battle and win. If Mariah runs, you get zero, and if both of them run, you get minus one Valor, so we have to get that count up to 99 by the end of uh, doing all these things we're doing. We're headed to the Dungeon Shame here, that was the River of Shame, and we're just going to climb down this ladder. Into a fight, and we have to use... Um, I don't really have a better strat here than using Quick. So Quick uh, gives the Paladin uh, two actions per round, so he can just one-shot two of these per round. But they're all so spread out and they all have such low health that uh, I don't really have a better strategy here. You could gamble with Tremor and try to kill them all in one round, but... That's pretty pretty heavy gambling. All right, we'll go here and remove the poison. Have to step in that poison tile for uh, to hit the switch to open the door. We're gonna climb this ladder here up the other side. And here's a battle. a bunch of energy here. Or I can just run away from these fixed battles once she's got her spell down. Paladin can just solo the rest. Notice there that the tree ran into the energy and died and there was no text. That's the great thing about the energy spell. I'm going to head up here. Again, we're here in this dungeon to find uh, another of the uh, six stones that are in dungeons. Here's a cool fight. You put some energies down and they all walk into them and die. Minus a couple stragglers, but too hard to hit them all. And there we go. We've made it through the Dungeon of Shame. I'm gonna talk to this guardian. Usually the answer is just always the first option, and they will break down the wall and give you the stone. Remember, we need all eight of these stones. We're gonna pop out here, see how the moons are. Uh, I guess the moons are good enough to go to Minok, so we're gonna gate over to Minok and just kinda, kinda wait here. The, the reason this run is so much longer than the other two is just because um, there's just so much to do, like, there's such a large requirement to enter the final dungeon. Right now we're, we're trying to get the Shrine of Spirituality. Um, to do that we have to wait for this Moon Gates. And once the moons are uh, both full moons, the uh, oh, the door to the shrine will open. Nice fight. We're just gonna wait here until the moons are double full. And boom. Shrine of Spirituality. Remember, we talked to that tree, getting our spirituality up to 99. We've got the Rune of Spirituality so we can get by the guard. And now that we meditate with 99 spirituality, we now have 100 
spirituality. And remember the goal of this game, there's no real like end boss, but the goal of the game is to become a good person and lead lead the people through an age of peace. Like after Exodus was defeated, we now have this era of peace and people don't know what to do anymore. They, they're used to living in fear of all these enemies running around, which of course in the overworld here there's still monsters everywhere, but uh, they need a leader to show them how to live in a, in a peaceful land. And we're gonna walk our way over to another shrine, which we need. After this one, we're probably gonna gate to Britain. And if the moons are bad, we'll go to Trinzic. So here's one of the first places where we can kind of uh, diverge our route. Though the moons are double new moons, so I can just go to Britain right now. I'm gonna meditate at the Shrine of Sacrifice. Remember that one was from uh, donating to the beggars. And we're gonna use Mariah to gate to Britain and go in search of a another stone. We've already got four stones and each dungeon kind of has a, an overworld entrance. But the dungeons in this game are also kind of all connected in level 8. So there's two entrances to each dungeon. And certain stones are faster to get from the overworld, certain stones are faster to get from that uh, connection down at level 8. So there's three three of the stones are faster from the overworld, so this is going to be the third of the overworld stones. And we need to make sure we have gold before entering. I know that I have some gold. The uh, guardian here wants at least one gold, or else he'll boot you out. And here's my favorite fight in the game, Revisited. Nice double energy field there. While the rest are walking through the lava, Mariah's running and the paladin is taking out this ogre. It's all ogre for him. <laughs> I, I, gotta, I gotta throw it in there as much as I can. It, it's the only joke I have. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize to the chat. Alright, we've got a squish on the paladin and energy on that guy. <laughs> Alright, these uh these floating eyeballs or gazers or whatever you want to call them, they have a sleep spell, so I'm gonna I'm gonna leave Mariah in the room just so she can tank. Any of those, so the paladin does not uh, fall asleep. So I leave her there. They, they will attack whoever's closest. And those guys are important later, because there's the final dungeon, and they, they exist in the final dungeon, and they're dangerous. They can uh, completely sleep lock the paladin. A nice little. Uh, where the uh, crossbow kills one and a couple of ice spells to kill the other. Headed through, this is Dungeon uh, Despise. Just making our way through to the stone. Here's another nice room where they will just all charge forward through this lava field. And I'll, I'll kill the back one because it's faster than uh, letting him have two turns. The heal. No more heals. More hidden walls. Which are everywhere, literally everywhere. If you see a door, it's probably fake. Uh, quick squish on the Paladin and Ice on Mariah. Take out these uh, Cyclops army. Do another Ice to speed it up maybe. Although we do want Mariah's mana to be 32 after this room, so I'll walk around a little bit. 
That's, that's a good strat there. I don't have to walk around too much. Alright, now we've gotta do... We gotta be really careful here, like... You gotta donate one. If you just mash that... I've I've mashed this several times. And he boots you out. Because uh, if you donate zero gold... You will get booted out of this dungeon. We pick up the stone there. And we're gonna teleport to Trinzic. This is kind of an optional thing we can do right now. Because the moons were good. Um, basically, you don't want the Trinzic moon to be on the left. Because then it'll just... The moon gate will already be there. And it'll take you somewhere that you don't want. Still have to do you, the you shrine, the Magentia shrine, and the dungeon grind. So Jalom or you is next. Uh, either one looks fine. Yeah, either one fine. We'll do this one now. We can uh, we can do Jalom after you. All right, we do this. Uh, Honor Shrine here, that bumps our honor up to 100. Then we're gonna gate out to... let's go you. And don't really care, we just need Mariah to survive. I need to cure her poison. She needs to... the Paladin doesn't have enough to gate us to Jalom after this. The only problem. No more bad puns from Yogi. Okay, now that now that we're honorable, there will be no it's all ogre for this guy jokes. <laughs> it was another ogre. I can't I can't help it. Alright, so we have to walk to another shrine here. Again I'm using uh the Ice Spell on Mariah as a filler. I'll pass this time because I want her to be 32 mana and we're really close to the shrine and I don't want to be walking around afterwards. And after this we're probably gonna gate, which will take us instantly to Jalom. And we'll take a we'll get the rune there and take a death warp, because we gotta do the uh, we gotta get the other three stones from the uh, from the dungeon network. Remember all the dungeons in this game are connected at the bottom on the, on floor eight. So you can get around, basically get every stone from that uh, network. And we're gonna head to Jalom. Because we're poisoned now, right? Uh, going to Jalom now does a couple things. It gets us the rune, which we need anyways. We need this rune to enter the Shrine of Valor. And we were here earlier to get Joffrey, but... Uh, this is Joffrey's town. But um, we couldn't get in that door because we didn't have the key yet. He cost 2,000 and we couldn't, can't get the key too early. We needed Joffrey's gold. So we go here, get the rune, and then we're just going to death warp. Raya turned into an ice cream cone for a second there, but now we're okay. Lord British will uh, save us from this uh, untimely death. Bring us back and say be more careful. He'll heal you up if you need it. But what that did is now we don't have to walk out of the town of Jalom, which we were just in. Now we just death warp to Britain, Britain Castle here. And everybody gets a full heal. The poison got removed. We got full heal on both party members. And everybody's back to full mana. And we don't have to walk back out of the town of Jalom slowly. So this did a lot um, of time saver. Okay, we're gonna go hit the rest of the dungeon, rest of the main dungeons here. The uh, Ithloth dungeon, which is here, this is the easiest way to dive down to floor 8 because it's got a shaft which has a ladder in it and the ladder just keeps going down and going down and going down some more. Don't have to do anything here, just all the way down to 8. There we go, bottom of Hithloth we go. In the dark we can make it our way to here. This is one of the those uh, like hub rooms. I, I, any direction you go here, up, down, left, right, will take you to a uh, different dungeon. And we go left here to Dungeon Covetous, and we're gonna lead this fight with a squish and a nice squish. All these guys get their health low and pick them off. 
one by one. If something doesn't move, it might have cast uh, the Reflect spell. So I don't want to shoot those with my bow. All of these guys at the bottom moved every time, I think, so I'm just going to bow them all down like that. Right Gargoyle might have uh, deflected there. It's called Reflect, but it's actually more of a deflect as it does not send your arrow back to you. And here we go through Dungeon Covetous, up a ladder, backpedaling through some secret doors. And we get a quick stone. This is the orange stone. There's one, one stone of each color, black, white, uh, red, blue, yellow, green, purple, and orange. I think that was eight colors. Backpedal back to here. Into the ladder. And into here. Uh, quick. Another uh, quick. For this battle, let's us. Uh, these are all one shotable with the bow. There's a lot of optimization to all these uh, fixed fights. There's a lot of different uh, options of spells you have, and you, again, you have to make all of your herbs last throughout the whole run. If you run out of herbs, you can't cast spells anymore. Uh, like if I run out of ginseng, I can't heal anymore, and that's very important. Like I don't want to. That's that's the herb I'm worried about is ginseng because everything uses ginseng. And I don't want to run out of that. Everything, all the good spells use it. More hidden doors. Alright, this is purple. Okay. Here, backpedal. Quicker to backpedal than the. Uh, Turn around twice, up four times, you can just walk backwards through the dungeons. Okay, another stone. This is after the purple altar. Scroll my notes here. There we go. Got the ladder. Here we are in. I don't know what dungeon this is. <laughs> It's one of the dungeons that has a stone that I need. That's all I need to know. Back to the secret, through the wall. Alright, back to the purple altar. Now we have enough stones to create a key. This is one of the three keys we need to beat the game. And it's just down, 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 down. And that creates the key of uh, courage. One of the three keys I need to enter the uh, final dungeon. And we're going to cut through this dungeon here. Two dungeon wrong. And we've got a squish energy fight here, as many of them are. Squish and energy have really good synergy together. Like you squish everything down to low health, and then everything just kind of walks through the lava afterwards. There's some big synergy going on here. Wow, that close ogre did not die. It was not all ogre for him. Okay, we have to hit the switch by walking through the lava, and 28 mana. On the Paladin lets us cast Squish when we come back through that room, which we have to backtrack through that room. We could just leave here, but we still have to go back and get the get two of the keys from the altars. So here's another stone. And, and that should be all of the stones. Yeah, that was the green stone, that was the last one. We got all eight stones now, and Squish and Energy on the tree, because the tree has a, a sleep spell. So we want to take him out quick. And he took himself out, which is nice. <laughs> this red guy has a, a silence spell, like a global mute that he can cast that's kind of annoying. 
All right, back through here. Dungeon wrong. And we're back into the white altar room. We can now, we know with that stone that we just got, we can make this key, which is uh, down, down right, down right. We're gonna cut through Hithloth to the south. Get back to the green altar room, which was the third one. We've already got the purple and the white one done, but we have not got the key out of the green one yet. Once we have all three of those keys, we've got the got the keys needed to enter the final dungeon. After that, we just need to become the avatar and get the bell, and we're good. We can enter the final dungeon, which is very lengthy. It's like a 20 minute 20 minute dungeon. <laughs> Probably the longest, one of the longest dungeons in RPG history. All right, we go right, down right, down, down right, and we got all three keys now. So Paladin is gonna cast Exit. Uh, Mariah is gonna get us to Magencia. Are we gonna look for a ship? They're very easy to find. There's one. Any ship can uh, appear on the edge of the world, on the edge of the uh, screen. And this pirate fight. We're gonna take them out with a. Let's use a single energy here. Sometimes I double energy here, but that's. Using up another Ginseng, and I kind of want to conserve. Got the big pirate. Or not. It's fine. Alright, here at Magentia, we have to go get the bell still. Remember, we need the bell, book, and candle as well to enter the final dungeon. Um, take out this uh, Courage, Truth, and Love, yeah. Are the three keys. We need the three keys, the bell book, and the candle. We need to become the avatar. We need all eight stones, and that's it. That's that's a lot of stuff, and that's why this run is so long, because um, there's just a lot of entry requirements to the final dungeon. And there's no glitches, either. Like, it's all just naturally glitchless. Plenty of glitches in three. There's a. I guess you could call it a glitch in five. That, that cuts out three dungeons out of five. But uh, this one is pretty. pretty empty on the glitch factor. Uh, we'll blink from this guy. But yeah, this is a pretty nice, nice RPG. It's pretty open ended. Uh, it's very clean and it feels good. Um, similar to Final Fantasy or Dragon Warrior, it's it's right up there. Like, if you need a uh, you need an RPG to play, this is the pretty pretty solid one. Of course, expect extensive map making and note taking, but uh, as the speed run goes, you just kind of to roughly the same route every time. Right in here, we picked up that horn earlier, so we need to blow that. You blow the horn, it makes a weird noise. That lets us into the shrine, and now the uh, Rune of Humility lets us in further. We can go here. Let me see, did I, mental check, did I do everything? I think we did everything. Um. So now we gate to Jalom. Should be... Yeah, we're good. We're good, we've got seven of the uh, eight virtues to a hundred. And the only one we need now is the random battle one. But before, before we just enter that shrine to get our final virtue to a hundred and become the avatar, uh, we have to take 60 steps because we just meditated and there's this, this weird uh, hidden 60 step counter. That wizard has deflect by the way, I'm just blasting him with a bow like it's 
no big deal. We also need a pirate fight here. Get over there. Yeah, this is a bit more open-ended than, um... I don't know, Dragon Warrior is fairly open-ended too, though, right? But, uh, definitely more open-ended than Final Fantasy. As, literally, in most places here, I can, uh, I can choose to do whatever I want. I could've got those stones in any order. I could've got them from the front entrance or the back entrance. I could've did the shrines, and there, there's different ways to get your virtues up. You can donate blood, which was kind of a... An older speedrun strat to get your sacrifice up, but later on it was discovered that uh, you could uh, donate all your money to a beggar and get your sacrifice like that. Alright, so here we are. I'm going to attempt to become the avatar here. I hope my battles are at uh, 49 random battles since the start of the game, and then I'll be able to get the uh, Shrine of Valor here get up to 100 valor and then it'll take all of my virtues up to 100 so that looks good I saw an exclamation point in that uh, wall of text that means you became the avatar so we'll, we'll know in the first battle here as I sail off if the paladin's mana goes above 28 benefits of becoming the avatar uh, any character gets 99 max mana all of a sudden that's the main benefit uh, secondly, you can enter the final dungeon, that's a requirement, and there you go, 99 mana. And at about 20 minutes upon entering the abyss, and that's what the final time is going to be maybe. So, okay, we're going to blink from that, they kind of charged at us. I really like the blink spell, it just instantly run, runs away from the battle. We don't need Mariah anymore, by the way. Uh, that pirate, eh, get me through, I don't want to use another blink. We're, we're trying to conserve on the Ginseng, one of the herbs. I'll definitely use a blink here, because this, this is a long battle. And Mariah will eat a bunch of poison, I'm gonna cure the poison off of the Paladin, but not Mariah. She can just get poisoned now. We're done with her. She'll leave us here. And we use the bell. And then we use the book. And we use the candle. And we're into the final dungeon, the abyss. This is a very dangerous dungeon, and upon entering, Mariah leaves. This is way too scary for her. Um, but in the PC version, you have to bring like eight people in here. So that's why. Well, this is going to be dangerous, because uh, it's solo uh, solo paladin. You're forced to do this dungeon solo, and it's like 20 minutes long, and there's no checkpoints. <laughs> so nothing can possibly go wrong here. Fortunately, last just yesterday, I, uh, I was inspired on a safe strat for the final two rooms. By uh, someone in my chat. And that will uh, give me some confidence to get through here. It's not guaranteed. Uh, I hope to get through this. I usually do, but you know, sleep, getting locked by a sleep spell can happen, so. Yeah, I would not be surprised if the run died to that. I'm gonna heal one time here because my health is a bit low. We're just squishing. Uh, all these fights. There is actually a yellow gargoyle in the back here, and if he sleeps, you turn one, which can happen. Uh, then the rest of the hydras here can just blast you to death. You gotta have a pretty healthy amount of health and hope that that doesn't happen. That one guy on the left was pretty kind and just kept charging through the lava after me. He had he had the blinders on, and there's a uh, spring here that we can rest up to 400 health. There's a quiz here, I gotta make sure that I answer these quizzes correctly, or you get booted out of the dungeon. Uh, it's just, if you're on floor one, it's the first option of the eight, and if you're on floor two, it's the second option of the eight for both questions every time. It's not a very difficult quiz. It's just, whatever floor you're on, that's the answer you pick. <laughs> 
and we have lost Mariah. She went back home, I guess, taking the ship, leaving me to solo this incredibly dangerous uh, abyss. It is a fancy cup asking you trivia questions. It's making sure that you paid attention throughout the game, basically. But uh, there we go, nice. So the tree, I, the tree put me to sleep. Now I'm getting beat down by these fires. But uh, the tree died on the lava, so we were able to wake up eventually. Very dangerous. I got the fire beat down. That's kind of rare. There's a lot of difference differences between this and the PC version, like. Here in the final dungeon, you, in the PC version, you can bring all eight uh, party members. You can recruit eight party members in general. In this one, you can only have four max, I believe. And these mice will just charge up into the lava. And we need 50 mana before we continue. Good thing. Regen mana after the fight by walking around. Here's another maybe dangerous room if the gargoyle decides to sleep me right away. The yellow one in the middle has a sleep spell, and of course he uses it. Mm. Okay, this is this. I woke up pretty quickly, so let's just put an energy there, protect myself, and make them all walk through it. Get rid of the sleeper, and they were all kind at the end there. I just walked through it. Moving up at the end there and bringing the skeleton up was faster than uh, using a bow attack on him. Because again, there's no no energy. Uh. Here's floor two. There's a hidden door. That ladder is fake. That ladder leads you to a fake floor three. Let's let's pick the second option and the second option and make sure that uh, we uh, always get these quizzes right or we lose. <laughs> but that's the most stressful part of the abyss, really. If you answer the quiz, I don't mind getting uh, locked into a sleep. Cycle, like they can just sleep, 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 and then you can never wake up. But then um, that, that I'm okay with. But if if I answer the quiz wrong, I'm gonna be really embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, that was floor three. That was all of floor three. So there goes that. I'm gonna be really slow on this quiz because I don't wanna pick the wrong one. All right, this is another triple sleeper room. Yep, you get kicked out. If you answer the question wrong. And I'm asleep already. But fortunately these guys are charging me. Missed that front one. Asleep again. Oh good, the front one died. Now there's less sleepers. Ooh, they're locking me! Okay. There, he's charging though, that's good. Oh phew. That is, uh, that is terrifying, this room. Any, any, those, those red orbs that they shoot can put you to sleep. And that happened a lot there. So now we're safe for a while again. Terrifying though that room. What if they just kept sleeping me and they never woke up? That's what the energy field is for. You put the energy field down and they walk through it and hope they die on it. Because if you get, that's the only attack you can do while you're asleep is uh, making them walk through lava. All right, we made it through there. Room four or four four, so it's the fourth option and the fourth option. And four five, we go east and there's a healing shrine. And we go up for a squish. There's another sleeper here. The yellow gargoyle also has sleep. Hopefully he just moves up like that and we can make a nice choke point on that spot there. And now all of these guys have to walk through that. And the red guy in the back has a silence as well. So if he gets that off before you get your spells off, then you can be in trouble. But we just had a full heal in that healing fountain. There's eight floors to the abyss. We are currently on, where are we, five, yeah, this is four, five. Here's another very dangerous room, triple sleep. And of course it happens. Uh, please wake up. Please, okay, he woke up. Okay, I think we're okay. Once the energy field is down, we're pretty safe. I'm gonna walk into the corner. So I'm farther, so they'll walk through the lava to get to me. Sleep again. <laughs> All 
Alright, sometimes it's good, if you've got the energy field, sometimes it's good to go to sleep because you'll just lose all your turns and they'll just all walk through the lava. And, uh, life is good. That's another uh, terrifying room when you're solo. I'm, I'm alone in here, guys. I need help. Here, none of those, all of those doors are fake. As usual, there's a hidden wall next to all those doors that has the actual, that, that has the real door. This is the only route through floor six. It's going through that uh, that um, fake wall. We just squish. Get a nice clean five cycle on those guys. Um, a lot of these water enemies, energy isn't good because energy. The lava from the energy can exist on the water. A lot of these uh, red water demons I just use the crossbow on because they're all one-shotable. And it saves you mana, so... Um, you also have to consider the opportunity cost of casting a spell in any of these fights. Like, if I cast Tremor, it costs 40 mana, but then I have to walk 40 tiles to get that mana back, which takes like 12-13 seconds. So you also have to take that into consideration when you're routing out these fights of uh, just how much the spells you're casting are actually costing you. Like in a fight like this, just using the bow, and I have such high mana here I can just ice this guy. And we'll keep the health nice and high. I've got 400 health max. Uh, we'll do another squish here. Remember the squish is uh, like a percent damage to everything. I don't know exactly how it works, but um, ooh, that auto was costly. But the squish can sometimes kill lower health enemies, so I guess it's possible to get 100% damage on the squish roll, but usually it's more like, I don't know, 70, 75% damage or something on each enemy. It's guaranteed to hit everything. Unlike Tremor, Tremor is a 50-50 chance, but it will definitely kill any enemy if it hits, but you could just whiff on it. You can cast your Tremor on these five guys and it could just hit none of them and you just wasted 40 mana. Which takes like 13 seconds to get back. So it's really a, a tough optimization process through all these fights. Here I'm going to use an Ice to get that one done quicker. I'm gonna bow the rest because I don't want to use too much more mana. There's no more healing fountains, so we're we're relying on the heal spell and my my stock of uh, ginseng. All right, this fight I like double ice. Just take him out. Double ice, and it's over. Okay, here we need uh, like 60 mana, I think. Yeah. This upcoming fight is fairly dangerous. If the yellow gargoyle s sleeps me, then things can get rough. I could retreat into the previous room, but that's usually a bad strat. Alright, he's being pretty tame here, so even if they go to sleep here, they'll just walk through the lava. And at worst, the serpents will get some hits in on me. The yellow gargoyle did not die though, that's bad. He woke up though. And. Okay, we're through that. Okay, that was kinda sketchy, but we made it through. I'm gonna walk a bit for mana. Okay, at least 60. Their health up a bit. Alright, that's good. Sixth quiz, sixth answer, and a sixth answer. And now we're gonna do another. There are so many battles here in the final dungeon. Like, there's no glitches to skip any of this or uh, skip really anything in this game, so that's why this run is kinda quite a bit longer than the other two. 
I'm gonna try to go up here and lure this bottom guy up into the lava. Nice. Nice. Pretty good fight here. And this guy's being a jerk. There he goes. Uh, what do we got here? 60. 60 mana. We got 29 Ginseng I saw there. We got 29 more heals. But remember, other spells use Ginseng like Squish, Energy, all of the ones that I use all the time. So there's another Ginseng Gung on, on that energy there. Uh oh, we got um, a s early sleep. We, we're not having very much sleep luck here today, guys. But I woke up at a, a good time there, enough to. Uh... Oh man, this guy is being a jerk. <laughs> That was not correct. I don't know why I went that way. Bit of a uh, brain fart there, but we'll take him out real quick here and keep going. That's fine. I was thinking I was somewhere else for some reason. It's hard to do three of these in a row. Three, uh, Three different RPGs, back to back to back, gotta remember everything. I usually only run uh, one at a time, so makes your memory more fresh perhaps. But now we're back on track, little little side tour there. We got to, got to take the scenic route. There's another room with a sleeper. And this floating eyeball in the middle could put me to sleep, which of course he does, man. We're getting the worst. The worst. The worst of the sleep looks. Mm, I've got a lot of health, but uh, I need to wake up. Come on. You can wake up. He's awake. <laughs> oh no, dude! Okay, the skeleton is blocking. I might, uh... Yeah, we're resetting this room, I think. I never wake up from it. This is the beatdown that we were worried about. Alright, we're we're resetting. Do I have enough to do this? We've got 28. Uh, Squish is 28. Yeah, we've got enough. Just do this. We got, we've got enough to heal as well. Let's just do that. That is so unlucky, man. Oh my god, and I came in here. This is fine. I, I like this better. I'd rather I'd rather go in here and be well prepared for the next fight. This has never happened, so I don't I didn't know which door to take. Usually you just take the door that uh, you didn't come out of, but there we go, that was easy. So this gives me more mana coming back into here actually, which is what I wanted. That was uh, that was very unlucky. It usually never it's, uh, the sleeps are never this bad, so of course you can. Uh, Blame marathon luck and such, but I was pretty uh, cautious on my ginseng use throughout the run, so we've got a couple extras here to do stuff like this. I'm just gonna get up uh, to a lot of health and a lot of mana here. 379 health is good. We're just gonna go all the way up to here and then try that fight again. Let's let's see what it's supposed to look like. With the squish. Of course, the problem is also always if that uh, gazer sleeps you right away before you get your energy field out, and that usually kills him right away. So this is what kind of what it usually looks like. Uh, much much better. And this effect resist in this game? No, I don't think there's any protection against sleep except just having. I don't have any armor. That that might hurt. I have zero uh, chainmail, uh, which you start the game with, but I sold it to go faster. All right, last, last floor here, and of course they've got another sleeper. Oh man, I hope I can make it through. Uh, I'll just 
So the tree. Okay, it's dead. Alright. Kill the guy on me. Kill the close guy before he goes into melee because the bow does more damage than the axe. And take out the rest. Scary stuff this. Here's another scary room. <laughs> if the gargoyle slips me here, we're in also big trouble. Uh, please don't. Okay, he didn't, so I think we're pretty good to go here. With this energy field up, we're uh, really safe. Good. I'm also conserving my healing, like, you can't run out of Ginseng or you don't have any more heals. Um, this one we need 50, so we're good to go. Here's another one of these uh, blue gargoyle rooms. These guys have Deflect and some other uh, less important spells, but basically if they move, I'm gonna shoot them. Those two in the back moved already, twice, so those guys don't have Deflect. Uh, you can tell it says they cast a flight, but I can't read it, so I don't actually read Japanese, I just know the menus. That guy had deflect, I think, but uh, it's hard for me to tell in the J version. One day I'll, uh, I'll learn what that word looks like. Well, that's one thing, I, I just have to usually just use my intuition and experience to, to know which ones have it. Um, Wish, attack, attack. Oh, here's a possible tremor room, but we're just gonna squish because there's only this battle and two more. This is a pretty rough room. So if they all decide to range to attack all the time, this room can be rough. And if the squish values are low, you don't get a lot of kills. If they're all just ranged attacking and not walking through the lava and dying like they should be, like those couple did. Yeah, we got it. We got enough here. I think we're okay here. This this battle can be dicey though. That guy on the left, if he moved forward, I would have taken less damage. There we go. Rough room. Okay, now we need to look at our herbs. We've got 11. I need uh, probably save uh, 6, so I can only heal 5 times. That's plenty. We only need 4 heals, so GG. Now, the final two rooms. I, I do have some methods prepared. They're not pretty, but uh, we can get through it, I hope. And the final two rooms are now. We're gonna Tremor. We've been sitting on this spell all game, we've never used it. Here it goes. Come on, give me a good one. Oh, three, four. Oh! The Dream. All right, that was a that was a beautiful tremor. We're gonna squish the remainder and uh, maybe just ice the paladin. That was a 50/50 chance to kill each enemy, so uh, very 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 lucky on the first try. That was six out of eight. It's very rare. It's like a 50/50, so on each enemy, and there's eight of them. So flip a coin eight times, and you've got to get heads every time to kill them all. The TAS, of course, does that every fight, because uh, you can manipulate it, but uh, we've got six heals, so let's just heal to full, I think. And we've got... the next room is also very dangerous, so we're going to use the uh, cheese strat that I discovered just yesterday if this tremor doesn't uh, hit big. If this tremor whiffs, we need to... we'll lose a lot of time, so... Plus RNG here, we're going to cast a tremor for the second time in the run. Kills a dragon, a sleeper, another sleeper, and that's that's perfect. This is great. Good, 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 good. Squish, the remainder, and energy, the remainder. Very nice fight here. Wow. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen a fight that good. Only thing left is don't back. If you just hold down here, you can backpedal back into this fight, and the and the door closes on you. So as soon as I answer this final quiz, I can no longer fail the run. It's not over yet, but uh, when I hit, when I reach the top teleportation tile in this room is time. We have to read 
this. They're talking about uh, truth, love, courage, the virtues, infinity, and all this stuff. And we became a good person by stealing from a blind lady and talking to some fire. And time. There's Ultima 4. Episode 130, I think. Yeah. Uh, given some of the luck I had there, it's not so bad. We, m we made up for it in uh, Ultima 3, I think. I think overall we're we're ahead of schedule. Truly a good paladin we have become. To get this far, we robbed a blind lady. We She asked us for 2,000 gold for this 90 stack of man root, and I gave her... I She has this little bowl, and you just take your gold piece and clink it in the bowl. Clink! And she's like, here, here's a 2,000 gold piece. I'll, I'll be taking my man root, please. And there we go. There's a bunch of, uh... I don't know why there's a second paladin doppelganger there, but, um... I guess there's more than one paladin. And congratulations. Thanks for the GG's, guys. Up next is Ultima 5. And this is this is the main event, guys. Like, I think, I think somebody said on the Ultima team... Ultima 4 was just too good. We need we need to tone it down a notch. <laughs> this this game was just too good. This is a really uh, I talk about this often, but Ultima 4 is a really nice RPG on the NES. It's 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 top tiered. It's up there with Dragon Warrior, up there with Final Fantasy. That's how good it feels. Like in terms of like how it feels, how it plays, the the gameplay, everything, everything, I can't find any, like, real faults in it, other than the fact that maybe, okay, maybe there's a few too many secret doors that you have to find. That can be my one complaint. There's way too many secret doors, but, I mean, that's part of, uh, like, these old dungeon crawlers, right? They wanted to make their game as long as possible, so you're, they're, you're not beating it, you're not paying $60 and beating it in, like, two hours. But that was Ultima 4. Now let's go to the main 